Welcome to Caseback Watches. My name is Tim and in this episode I'd like to present you a very interesting and important clock. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to present you the Doomsday Clock. The Doomsday Clock is a very simple device which indicates on the 12th the end of civilization and the minute hand indicates how many minutes are left to midnight, right? This is the concept of the Doomsday Clock. It was invented in 1947 and it wasn't invented by a watchmaker, it was invented by a group of scientists, the Chicago Atomic Scientists Group, which was part of the Manhattan Project, which led to the invention of the first nuclear weapon on Earth. And after World War II, after the bombing of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, this group of scientists thought, we have something here so dangerous that we should inform the community of scientists about it. And we're talking about the days before the internet and so if you don't have this part of infrastructure and you want to inform people, you want to join people, you want to keep people connected, then you need a newspaper or a magazine and that's exactly what they've done. They founded the Bulletin of Atomic Scientists and here you see one of the first covers and there you can see clearly what they considered dangerous and important and there we're talking about the bomb and what is the astonishing achievement here is the date 1947 years before the arms race between russia and the united states in fact two years prior to the invention of the russian bomb there those scientists saw that this is a major threat for human civilization and then they went some steps Further, they didn't want to keep the community of scientists informed. They also wanted to address the public. And this with the doomsday clock, with a very easy to spot and very easy to understand symbol for a major threat. And since 1947, every year in January, the bulletin defines what means the end of civilization, what means doomsday in this particular year, and then they set the time. And in the early years of the clock, nuclear warfare was clearly seen as the major threat. This is today slightly different, we will talk about that. And now let's make a little tour, let's make a little tour through the decades and let's see what the clock has told us to certain events in human history. 1949, three minutes to midnight. And this is because back then the Soviet Union invented their bomb, their first atomic bomb. And so 1949 now is seen as the beginning of the arms race. And it got worse very quickly because in 1953, the United States invented the thermonuclear weapon, the so-called H-bomb, followed by the Soviet Union very quickly, two minutes to midnight. Then interesting date in human history is the Cuban Missile Crisis, 1962. And the clock told us, Seven minutes to midnight. Why is that? Seven minutes to midnight. Um, historians see this year as one of the most dangerous years in human history. So why seven minutes to midnight? Why is that? Because the clock is not updated. In January 1962 they thought, well, we're in a dangerous time, but regular, average, no recent crisis. And then the Cuban Missile Crisis occurred and that's the reason for this very dangerous year together with the doomsday clock set at seven minutes to midnight. And after the Cuban Missile Crisis the people were I think on both sides slightly shell-shocked and nobody wanted to risk anything and so back then the people saw then more relaxed years until 1968. Intensified Vietnam War Indo-Pakistani war in 1965 and the Six-Day War in 1967 plus France and China joined the club of nations with access to nuclear weapons and so seven minutes to midnight told us the clock. Next critical year then was 1984 Soviet-Afghan war intensifying of the Cold War because of all those proxy wars Pershing two medium range ballistic missile and cruise missiles are deployed in Western Europe and in general the arms race between the superpowers because this led to a very fatal or almost fatal misunderstanding. In this time, which is pictured in this book by the way, very good book, big recommendation, because in this time especially the Americans trying to intimidate the Russians with a, with a very drastic vocabulary with some bluffs involved but the Russians took everything 100% and they really were, were under the impression that a nuclear attack was to be expected in the next days or in the next hours and so um, this led to a very very dangerous situation pictured here in this book The Spy and the Traitor by my Ben McIntyre big recommendation you'll find it in the description as an affiliate link. 
But then, 1991. Doomsday clock, 17 minutes to midnight. So everybody seemed pretty relaxed. Why? Because the United States and the Russians, they signed the Strategic Arms Reduction Treaty, better known as START-1, and then the Soviet Union broke up. And this was seen back then as the end of arms race. And this is the farthest from midnight the clock has been since its invention in 1947. And since then it's um, getting worse. 1998 backlash because India and Pakistan tested nuclear weapon in an individual arms race between those nations and so the clock reacted nine minutes to midnight. And since then constant declining and new threats. In the beginning of the clock it was all about nuclear warfare but nowadays we have some different threats and Every year the, the bulletin sits together and they try to define what's the worst threat, what, what can end civilization in this year. And these are still atomic weapons, but it's also climate change now and information warfare. Information warfare. Because they say information warfare can be so disturbing and can lead to a very strange allocation of resources. And so this is a major threat to to the human civilization. And a very prominent and notorious example for this is the attempt to, to discredit climate change as a scientific fact. So now we are talking about a bundle of threats and this leads to the, our year now, 2020. We are at midnight minus 100 seconds. And the reasons are still the, the nuclear focus, the end of the intermediate range nuclear forces treaty between the United States and Russia. Then more tensions between the United States and Iran and they say the continued failure to combat climate change. By the way, I wrote to Janice Sinclair, this is the communication director of the Bulletin in Chicago, United States, and I told her that it's rather unusual in the watch genre on YouTube to handle political topics, but unusual. And then she wrote back very quickly, you should know that the bulletin is not political in nature, nor is the doomsday clock. And I think this is a smart move to say this because they don't want to be instrumentalized uh, for one side or another side. And so this is very wise to say that this is not a political topic, which um, is not so convincing for me, but I clearly understand the statement here. And so Janice Sinclair, thank you very much again to provide me here with press images and press material about that, that clock. Little addition, by the way, what's with Corona? Could Corona be a topic for the doomsday clock? Clear answer, no, because it's not so dangerous. It cannot end human civilization. And so maybe it could be a tiny part of the scenario, but I think not, not more. Okay, and that's all for this video. I hope you find it useful and I hope you feel encouraged now. Why encouraged? Because I think when we live in dangerous times, then we should be informed. And that's what I try to do with videos like this. I would try to inform you in a neutral and I hope useful way. And now let me thank you very much for your attention and maybe until next time. By the way, as a preparation for this video, I've bought the computer game Cold Waters and here you see Cold Waters. I just want to show you this quickly. There you can play American submarines in a fictional conflict during the Cold War against the Russians of course and your job is then to pick your U-boat. Here you see a Los Angeles class and to sink other Russian subs, to insert special operation teams, to fire missiles and of course you have to down other ships and it's pretty intense and it's pretty hard. There are tutorials out there on YouTube where you have to spend hours to master this game. But I like this, I like this. Here you see the Los Angeles class submarine uh, with outer view and you see a wonderful animated ocean with really really beautiful shot if you ask me. And yeah, let's fire a torpedo just to show you the camera move here and then you can follow the torpedo now I'm diving here after firing the torpedo and you have a lot of controls and a lot of data as you can see here on these little screens. You have the sonar conditions, weapon systems, damage control and everything. It's a pretty pretty hard game but clear recommendation available now on Steam and this is not an ad, I'm not affiliated with Steam. Mm -hmm.